It's week seven of the National Football League, and we'll see Quay Walker. He had a healthy stat line a week ago with nine stops and a sack. It's the Bucks and the Falcons, and it's coming up next on Madden Football. Still a bit warm here in Florida, but really all things considered, a wonderful fall afternoon for football here in Tampa at Raymond James Stadium. Today we've got a matchup here in Pivotal Week 7, as it'll be the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Again, everyone, Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at this Buccaneer ball club. They come in on a pretty good roll here, winners of three straight. Meanwhile, for the visiting Falcons, they've come in on a nice run of recent form, four wins out of five. And how about that defense last week? They pitched a shutout, and it's really more like a no-hitter because they absolutely dominated that game from the opening whistle. Getting toward the halfway point of the NFL season. Week 7 is underway on EA Sports. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. They'll be led out by a third-year pro and third overall pick from North Dakota State. He battled injuries early in his career. Try to stay healthy now. That's Trey Lance. And just think about what his ceiling in the NFL could be because when you go back to his one collegiate season as a starter, the full season, he went undefeated, didn't throw an interception, and ran for over 5,000 yards as well. When you see him hit the field, you see a possible superstar in the making. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And they'll send the slot in motion left. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. The numbers for him from a week ago, 25 carries, 72 yards, and a touchdown. A key component of his team's offense, he will certainly stay in that role if he keeps producing like this each week. Expecting to make a run and not only matching, but exceeding those numbers as this one goes on. On second down, it's Abanacanda. And he'll get about three here up to the 44-yard line. Well, CD, you see some of the injuries that have popped up for this franchise and obviously hoping to get these guys back sooner rather than later. Yeah, and these guys, they've been hearing the mantra next man up since their Friday night light games in high school. It's three simple words, but they're absolutely perfect to use, and everyone has adopted them. Next guy up, do your best. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call. And they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here and maybe want to go pick it up. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. That's fielded at the eight-yard line. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And the Falcons will get it first and 10 from deep in their own territory. So now we'll get a look at the other offensive unit as they come out for their first possession. They're led out by the former Oregon Duck in his ninth NFL season now, Marcus Mariota. Coming out of Oregon as the Heisman Trophy winner, we thought that this guy was headed towards superstardom, and while he didn't quite reach those heights, he did have some flashes along the way. And right now, his athleticism continues to keep him in the lead. Still has a good arm. Mobile, a great guy to have in the locker room. He can win if given an opportunity. The numbers for Jones last week, 10 carries, 54 yards. There were some signs of life from the ground game last week, but overall, just a so-so performance. Everyone knows they can make a slight improvement how they contribute to this aspect of the offense. Lyman can set their blocks and hold them a little bit longer, and he can be quicker to the hole and hit a lane. If they do that, they should get some better numbers produced this week. On third down, Mariota. And oh, that nearly an opening drive INT, but it does fall incomplete. Not the way he wanted to start this ball game as he brings up fourth down. Blake Gillikin on a punt here as he'll send this one away. That's pulled in at the 32. 
It's a 47-yard punt, return of six. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. Here now, second and nine from the 39-yard line. Another carry now for Madison. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Well, this defense for the Falcons, they were terrific a week ago with a win over Washington. Yeah, we're definitely in top form and pitched a shutout, as a matter of fact. That's the cherry on top of a great week of preparation. And you know what? These guys are... Well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Troy Madison. His second touchdown on the season. And the Buccaneers get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts. <laughs> All right, because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in Big Sky Country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Extra point by Ryland, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Ryland now following the touchdown, back out to kick it away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to spring together a nice drive and help themselves out. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Front of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Now Mariota. And that will be incomplete. That looks like it's going to be two empty possessions now to start this football game. I think they're going to have to sit down and talk about what worked for them last week in their win. Sometimes you over game plan, overthink things, get back to what works. It's a 46 yard punt, two on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. So here are the Bucs to take over on offense. They're on a three game winning streak and right now looking good in this one as well. Gonna begin the drive here with Madison. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure you're back. You spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did. Now Lance unable to escape, and down he goes. Montez Sweat, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Throwing his lance on third down. Working the middle of the field, he's got a man to play. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And points result, we'll call this play significant. Here's Madison running on first down. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. The Bucs at three and two, a game over 500 here to start the season. And they coming on a pretty good roll here. Winners of three straight. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience, all on display in that victory. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. To throw, it's Lance. 
And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. On is Jake Bailey to send this one away. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. We'll see if they can do better here on this drive. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. But you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Four yards, the pickup, first down. They'll go again to Jones. And they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. To throw is Mariota. Man open. That's Jamar Chase complete. So the completion there. But Charles, looking at this defense, in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allow the completion there. They don't want to get it. It comes, and he lost the football. Mario had it jarred loose, and it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. Well, he was having success there, holding on to it on the option, but ultimately problems downfield, and it results in a turnover. Yeah, and this is a tough one because you know you'd prefer to have your quarterback either heading to the sidelines or getting down at the end of the play. But you've got an aggressive one. He's fighting for extra yardage, and he gets stripped there. You don't need him to be a hero in that situation. You want your quarterback taking care of himself. They'll start on the ground with Madison. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. And now we'll get a stoppage here. There appears to be an injured Falcon on the field. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Now Lance. This goes out wide from Madison. They'll wind up getting just a yard. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football. This offense so far on third down, they've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 11. Here's Lance. He'll get this underneath to Madison. And he gets this only to the 44-yard line. Not near enough to keep the drive alive. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. And the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. And he didn't quite have the bank spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Ready, set. First and ten now for the Falcons and Mariota at their own 20-yard line. And he'll begin the drive with a give to Jones. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack. And it'll lead to a third. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Third and 19. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. Got a 
great start to this drive. You had the sack, now the false start. I mean, it doesn't take much to either read lips or just imagine what the head coach is saying right now. Get your head in the game, guys. Let's go. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but they've got this one up to the 35-yard line. A real letdown defensively. That was third and a bundle, but they allow the conversion. And that's a much-needed completion right there on third down. Really a sigh of relief, isn't it? They're backed up deep. You know they don't want to give the ball back to the other guys. A great field position. They needed that throw, that completion, that first down. Just a gain of a couple there, and it's second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in coverage. What a nice play he made there in the open field. And a stoppage here, a timeout before this third down play takes place. So as they talk it over, we step aside. He's got his target. That's complete. Touchdown, Falcons. Sammy Watkins, his first touchdown on the year. And the Falcons are an extra point away from evening this one up. Great corner out there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and we are tied at seven. That time, a six-play drive, and it's Sammy Watkins who finishes it off with a touchdown reception. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during the series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Second and six at the 29-yard line. Now Lance on the option right. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. The decision to keep it turns out to be a good one. 11 yards in the first down. But I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. That's going to go as a loss of seven, and it'll set him back for second down. These guys off the edge are already tough to contain when they're protecting a stationary target. Asking them to hold their blocks when a runner is struggling to find a lane, often an impossible task. Regardless of the outcome on the scoreboard, that will be one of this game's biggest stops. In motion left, that's Gage. Lance with a tap forward on the jet sweep. And he's just going to run right into that big old defensive end. And that play going nowhere. Well, I think the hope is, you know, with a touch pass like that, they, maybe you catch the defense off guard, but they were all over that one. And it is the kind of play that works better against certain defenses. And this clearly was the one you have to run into. Really nice job getting him down behind the line of scrimmage. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. And here's Jake Bailey now. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. We'll call that a 47-yard punt, a return of just three. And the Falcons will be taking over first and ten. Atlanta now coming out on the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive. And they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. And he'll make.
manage to pick up about four. It's second down. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down and six. Mariota to throw it. Mike Evans. And this one caught downfield by Evans. Touchdown. Mike Evans. 61 yards. And the Falcons have taken the lead. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. Tucker with the extra point, and that makes the score 14-7. to Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. That 7-0 lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the point when we got them down here the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they get this game tied up. On play action, Lance, nowhere to go here. He lost the football, but fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble. That could have been trouble. Dangerous spot for them to cough it up. Lucky to have recovered because had the defense gotten it, they were already within the shadow of the goalposts. Yeah, and then you're yelling at your own defense. Sudden change, sudden change. That's not what you want to hear on your sideline. That means you've got to run out there and try and stop an offense who has the ball in a very advantageous position. So danger averted for the moment, but now here's a third and long. Throwing now is Lance. And that is incomplete. So it looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Take it at the 37. 13 yards, the tally on the return there. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. Mike Evans and the rest of the offensive unit heading back out there now. He's delivered a solid performance so far here in the second quarter. Everything has been good for him. And right now, if you're on defense, you don't want it to go to great. So you have to just change up coverages and looks on him all the time. Press coverage sometimes, back off and play some man, show some zone, double team him, make him really work for each and every catch. He's hit the end zone once. Maybe there's more in the tank. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. A loss of three on a sack made by multiple defenders. The offense on third down, two for five in this point. This is third and 11. Mariota. This one swung out here to Jones. And they'll bring him down right at midfield, and he is well short of the first down. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Here's Blake Gimmickin now. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. A time to get another look at this Buccaneer offense. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do this thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And now here's a deep shot that's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. 
36 yards on the play. Well, my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and ten. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And he'll go down, but not before getting his inside the 30. That one goes for 24 yards. Lance now on first down. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. The result only four yards there on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Now a second and six. Again, they'll throw it with Lance. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. As the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. Loss of 10 as multiple defenders get to it. And they're picking up right where they left off with the shutout that they pitched last week. A huge part of that, this pass rush. They know how to get after people. Offensively, good luck finding some answers right now. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Here's Lance to throw it. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout. And with half time on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, it's been a tough go for him. These guys have been driving down the field, but defensively, once they got their backs to the goal line, turned up the pressure, that's going to lead to a fourth down. Well played. And his kick here is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14 10. So they're able to get that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. And with only four seconds on the clock, time likely for just one snap of the football. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. A lot to get to here as some of the division races starting to take shape as we look around the NFL here in week number seven. one to watch so far we knew this was going to be a battle and we have not been disappointed this is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way okay coach thanks as always this one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three the Falcons back to receive they've got the lead and they'll get this football as the second half gets underway and he'll be stopped up at the 25. So here are the Falcons to take over on offense. They got the victory last week. That was against Washington. And now they lead this ball game as well. Set to go here first and 10. The second half starts with a carry by Jones. And he maneuvers up the middle for three. And it's second down. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Mariota. 
He's got his man. That's Everett, the tight end. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. That goes for a gain of 31. He came out with an aggressive mindset to start the third quarter, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them take more of these type of deep shots as this game moves along. They connected there. They expect to connect on more before this one's over. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Now the toss to Jones, running right. Down inside the 40. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted. But it winds up falling incomplete. First down marker on the 31. It's third down. Here's Mariota. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. And that is no good. Oh, he missed it just wide of the upright. And this will stay in for a point game. And any time you see a kicker try out the try one for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the back part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through, and that one winds up no good. So the missed 56-yarder, and now the flip side. Good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. Throwing on first down is Lance. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. And down he goes at the 45 after a pick up at nine. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space. It turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Six yards, the pick up, and that's a first down. They'll go Madison up the middle. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. James Daniels, the guard, called for the penalty there. On the option, running left is Lance. And holding it, maybe the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Yes, indeed. That play there, that reminds me of some of the guys that I played with to have that suddenness, able to get into the backfield almost about the time the ball snapped and make a play. How about that tackle for a loss? Absolutely. He did a lot of that last week when he was named the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. One of the guys on the team was saying, hey, yeah, we called him the disruptor. And that's carrying forward again. Makes sense, doesn't it? So third down and the Falcons going with a dime. Six defensive backs. And Lance now to throw. And that almost intercepted. Oh, they would have loved to have their first pick of the game right there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Here's Chad Ryland now on for the field goal. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. A 50-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And the lead is down to one now. 14 14. Maybe a little fortunate there. That was leaking a little. Maybe leaking a lot, but he got it. Yeah, he actually was able to make it work. How about the body language, though, right? As he's watching that ball leak to the right, trying to, trying to bring it back in. And had just enough to get it done. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. The last time out, they had that long 50 plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they'll tell the offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Here's a second and two now from the 33. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. 
coach was beaten. And that'll be a free five yards for the offense. Just like a tennis match, that's just an unforced error. error. Stay yeah. alert, don't jump early, and give them free yardage. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Now Mariota. Quick throw, fighting Mike Evans. They'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. They run with the second-year man. It's Kenneth Walker. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 14 yards there and a Falcon first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? A first down run here by Jones as he'll take it forward for a gain of about four. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. And he'll get three down in the 34-yard line. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? Mario now. Very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Thanks to his effort, they now have a big choice to make here. He just ran them in the field goal range with that one. Here come the choices. Do they kick it here, or do they trust him to make another big play and possibly get a first down? They missed a field goal earlier, so possibly as a result, that's why they're going to try to go for it here on fourth down. They'll run for it. It's Walker. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. They'll try to throw now. Mariota. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Mariota's throw taken in by Watkins here. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 12-yard line. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. They go back to the ground with Jones. And he's going to work this one down to about the 5. 61 yards rushing for him now to this point. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they look up at the scoreboard. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. Well, this has been a long drive. In fact, it's eaten up a good chunk of the third quarter, which is precisely what you want when you're playing with the lead. You control the, you control the clock and impose your will on the defense. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, is going to take a peek and we'll take a break. One back in the game. That's Jones, second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he will take it in for a Falcon touchdown. Aaron Jones. His second rushing touchdown on the year as his guys are able to extend their lead. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. Tucker now for the extra point. And with that, the lead is up to eight. So that drive spans 13 plays. And the last play in the drive was a touchdown run by Aaron Jones. 
Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. And he goes out and gets the job done for them, but I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think it's too for them just kicking the extra points as well. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. They'll send Parker in motion right. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Back now in Tampa. It's Buccaneer football, but they've got where they find themselves behind here to start the fourth quarter. And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that, but that would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. On second down, this is Madison. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing his lance on third down. Throw to the right, hauled in by Addison. And he's going to have the Bucs first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Now a give to Madison. Get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play there. Second down. On the handoff, a band of Canada. And he's over midfield and into Falcon territory. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. And this offense on third down today, they're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third and four. He's going to float this one deep right side. And he's good. Travis on touchdown to Tampa Bay. Rafiska Chanel, 46 yards. And the Buccaneers have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. So part one of what they needed is done. They get in the end zone. Now you have to imagine we'll see a try for two. And that's what the book says, but defensively, they can't hang their head right here. They still got a chance to come out with the lead if they make a play. And he will get into the end zone for two. And this game now tied here in the four. Still time to work with on the clock, but they wanted to tie now, and they got it. And I love their aggressiveness. Go ahead and get it done, get the game tied. Now your team has the momentum, and you're staring across the field saying, let's see if you can match us. And this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. This fielded right at the goal line. Now a hit and a loose football. And I believe he was able to get this back. He was. Boy, after giving up the touchdown, lucky that didn't turn into another. I didn't do this in college, but I did it in high school. When you return kicks <laughs> and you lose it yourself, the panic that goes through you and the determination to get the ball back I don't even know how to describe it. And I think we just saw an example there. Yeah, and the relief when you get it back <laughs> like he did. Yeah, you go to the sidelines, you know you're going to get yelled at, but you can handle it because you got the ball back. A first down throw for Mariota. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Well, we all know possessions are crucial in a tie game. And let's face it, I really didn't so when he sees he's got nothing good going, an excellent decision to just send that one to the sideline. It comes, and he lost the football. Mario had a jog loose. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. Second time in this game, Charles, the ball is screwed out from his hands, and luckily his teammate was there to pounce on him. You're right, got the lucky bounce, able to retain possession. You know, and we often talk about the combine and why do we measure quarterbacks' hands. Is that really a big deal? It's for situations like this. Do you have the hands big enough and strong enough to hold up to the football by being Johnson? As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal. 
those are the we don't often talk about it. You can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. So possession goes over here on the run, and they will take over first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly. And that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. So the completion good for seven there. And third and one now. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. 63 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. Here's the second year back, Pierre Strong. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little. Still a few inches short of the first down as they come up now on second down. Give to Madison running right. Two yards, good enough for first. Without realizing any play call that is properly executed and go for a touchdown. The runs that really make it work are the ones where you just get what you need, right? And he barely got a first down, but he got it. A band of camera on first and ten. Offensive lineman love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them and they really embrace him. And he's just going to run right into that big old defensive end and that play going nowhere. This defense not fooled one bit on that touch pass. And this has become one of those kind of in vogue plays, you know, kind of like the shuffle pass was a few. This one never got off the ground, but you understand why a lot of teams are running it. These wide receivers, a lot of them, they run like running backs with the ball in their hands. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good and a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. What a tough spot to miss a kick. Just an absolute letdown. Look, they got themselves in the field goal range, gave them a chance to take the lead. They come up empty, and now you wonder, will their offense ever see the football again? Yeah, because on the other side, one through the post, and this thing could be over. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. So the completion gets him just a yard, and that'll make it second down. The defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, he turned into a play with no angles where he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Mill Williams able to run him down for a loss of 12 at that time. turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Now Mariota looking deep here for Chase. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Well, Given credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Uh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. That's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. Fielded at the 20. Call that a 46-yard punt, though they did get nine back on the return. And now will come the offense as they take over. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. 
Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity, all tied in the fourth quarter. And they'll begin by running the option. Six yards there on the keeper at second down. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football. Defense gave it. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. And that will get a stoppage here. There appears to be an injured Falcon on the field. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. Back to the ground on first down. Here's Madison. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Maybe I'm wrong, but it looked like even if he had opted to keep that, I don't think there was going to be much to gain. Seemed like it was perfectly defense. You know what they say. Those guys on the other side, they get paid too. Another try, second and ten now. And now they'll throw with Lance. He's going to have the hook up to Gage. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Here's first down. Lance looking to throw. Got the left side. He's got it complete. Party got a lot of the doing right there. Little by little, they're getting closer. Another good pick up. Plenty of time left, plus all three timeouts. Here's first and ten. Running from the shotgun with Madison. There he goes, left side. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the ten to the seven. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts. Here's Madison running on first down. As they'll get it with just a shade under a minute to go in the game. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter play. And same result. He's going to take this just to the line of scrimmage before running into a brick wall. On third down, they run with Madison. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. Partner, you get about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. This to almost certainly win the football game. And his kick is good. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. The whole crowd here absolutely loves it, as they should, getting the field goal in the closing moments and likely going to get out of here with a W. A W, celebrations all around. How about how everyone's going to leave this stadium, right? And you know something? He probably makes more money than most of the 60,000 people here, but they're all willing to buy him dinner tonight, aren't they? No, they don't care. He's a man of the people right now. <laughs> Mariota. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. They'll try again here. Second and ten. One last shot now for Mariota. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete, so the foul drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. And a fun, close ball game comes to an end. On that last play, Charles, they were on the wrong side of midfield. They needed something near a miracle, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, the effort, that was good. Very good, in fact. They were just a little too far out to get a decent look at the end zone for that last opportunity. Couldn't get it done, but a nice game overall. So for Tampa Bay, their good start continues as they get their record up to 4-2. and two. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Buffalo Bills. Meanwhile, for Atlanta, the loss drops them back to 4-3 and three so far. And they'll try to rebound next week on the road in Nashville. So for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. Next game, guess what? Charles and I will be here again. It's the NFL on EA Sports.